Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Today, I'm really excited because we have page transitions now finally available in server components. So this is available now in Next.js 14.2. Check this out. I'm on a homepage here. If I navigate over to another route here to the about, look at that. We get this nice smooth fade transition and this nice crossfade. The cool part is you can also add this to other elements. So I have a group here of like, uh, cards, for example, right? And if I remove this, for example, look at that, it automatically animates uh, between those states. And this is done through the View Transitions API. And if you also enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. It'll really help this channel out. Don't you want me to smile? Don't you want me to be happy? It's emotional manipulation right there. Okay, so let's let's have a look. So check this out, you probably have a Next.js project or React router or Tanstack router project. You'll be able to import this unstable view transitions now from the official React package. So let's have a look here. Let me wrap this around. Here we go, unstable view transition it's called. And then I just renamed it to view transition like that. And uh, what you normally have here is something like this, right? Where you have your children which represent each of these pages. So if you go here to back to home, right? It goes to slash home. If you go back here, I'll go to slash about. So what we can do is just simply wrap these pages now with that view transition API. So we can go down here, say view transition, and there we go, that's all you need to do. You optionally have also the ability to pass down here a name, but by default, it's automatically just gonna crossfade the animation for you. So let's give this a shot. So how am I like going over to the about page? I simply just have a link tag, a normal link tag. And this is kind of the disadvantage if you use one of those uh, packages that there was before, like next view transitions, I believe. Uh, they kind of hacked together uh, their own link tag to make this work. But this works with the official uh, normal link tag. So as you can see, this gets imported by next view transitions here. You might have seen this package around. Uh, but this is like all native now. And there we go. Now when we click here, as you can see, we get that nice crossfade happening. Now how do you customize this? What I recommend doing is is to give it a name. So go over to your view transition and add a name to it. Uh, let's call this page, for example. And then you can go over either to your global.css and add uh, the styling here, or you can do it through JavaScript as well, which I'm gonna show you. So if I go down here, as you can see, I set up a little keyframe. So it's just a slide out and a slide in. It goes from opacity zero and I just move it up and down. Um, and that's it, right? Now, how do you actually grab the view transition? Well, we can do something like this, view transition new and view transition old. Or if you wanna grab the whole group, you can do it with a group like that. But let's say I grab the new one and I can just simply pass in the name that I passed in here uh, for my view transition name. So we call this page. So check this out. I ended up defining the view transition old here, added a, the slide out animation to it with a 0 0.5 second uh, transition time duration, right? And then the new page that comes in, I wanna delay it just a little bit so this has time to kind of go out and then this comes in 300 milliseconds after. So it's the same animation, it's just a slide in version of it with a delay. And check this out, now when I click, we get this nice cool page transition going. How cool is that? Now one thing to note, if you do the back and forth on your mouse here, it's not gonna trigger that animation anymore. So you can still navigate really quickly like that, uh, which I like. Now check this out, I also have these boxes here that animate one by one like that when I remove them. Let me show you kind of quickly what we have here. So what we can do is do a, I just have a state here, right, with a bunch of boxes to output this, and I'm just filtering through it, right, and I'm basically checking the one I'm clicking on, get rid of that, right, get rid of the ID, and then set the new boxes here. So that's all I'm doing, we're just updating state essentially, and then here, I'm just wrapping that view transition here uh, through the loop. And that's pretty much it. I'm passing down the key. I'm passing down the name for the box. So it identifies, hey, each box has its own unique ID. So it knows how to transition between the states. And that's pretty much it. And look, it just magically works. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind is you need to add the start transition and wrap your state update with this. So it can do it in the background and actually like smoothly, uh, you know, do this transition. Because what essentially view transition does is it takes a snapshot of the current state here and then a snapshot of what's coming in as well and tries to animate between those two. You can transition things that are getting deleted. You can also transition, you know, the position of like flex items if you want. That's something that can be achieved as well. So for example, let's just go up here. I'll set, I'll set a new state quickly. Let's do a, um, we'll do is on and then set is on like that, and by default, 
we'll do a use state and set this over to false. Okay, and then I'll just do a button down here that basically is gonna trigger that. So let's go right below here. This is something like this where we set a div here. I'll add a flex to this with a gap of four. And let's also do a justify, maybe like between. And I'll show you how we can animate between these states. So maybe you have something like that. And then in here, I'll just pop in three divs here. Uh, we'll do a width of 24, height 24, BG red of 500. Let's see how that looks. There we go. So we got that. And then I'll just let's just duplicate that a couple more times. There we go. Three times there. There we go. Okay, so they're uh, justified between. Okay, now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say is on here. And I'm going to add the justify content in between here. So I'm going to say justify between if this exists. Otherwise, let's do maybe justify center or something like that. And let's hit save. So there we go. So it starts off there, and now we can just simply wrap this in the view transition like that. And there we go. After you wrap this view transition in, make sure you change this over so now it also wraps the start transition. Again, if you don't have the start transition, this is not going to animate. Uh, so check this out. Look at that. We are animating between these states here as well, which is pretty cool. You can also do conditional rendering here and all pretty much anything that you can imagine. This is such a sick API. This is my favorite React API that they announced in probably the last like eight years. So I'm really, really buzzed for this. Uh, so you can do something like, hey, is on is true, then I'm going to render out this component. Otherwise, I'm going to render out uh, this component here, right? You can do stuff like this too, uh, and it'll work if you wrap it in a view transition. Now, one thing I found a little bug, so I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong or if this is a bug or not, but check this out, and anyone else can try this out and let me know. If you have multiple transitions, no matter where they are, if you wrap it in a star transition, yes, that's going to enable you to animate everything. But what I've seen here is if you like check your console, this might be just like a bug in Next.js 14.2. Uh, but when you do these animations, when the start transition kicks off, it actually triggers all the transitions that there are on the page. So any, any name transitions that you have, like my page here, see, that starts animating as well. Or if I, I trigger here as well, right? It'll start triggering all of them at the same time. So. I'm curious about that. I wonder if there's a fix. I tried naming all of them, but it still ends up triggering all of them and runs all of them. So I'm not really sure what's going on there, but this is so exciting. Again, the browser support for this is, is getting there. You know, we are not, this is not looking as bad. I showed you like the scroll one two weeks ago and that was still like struggling a little bit, but the actual view transitions can I use, you know what? Not too bad. Who's missing out here? Firefox? Do we care about those people? I don't think so. Um, 84%. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. That's looking really, really good. Um, but even if it doesn't work, right, if you're using a browser then it doesn't work, you're just not going to get that animation. So it'll just automatically go to that page. So it's not like you're missing out on anything. It's like pr progressively enhanced. Oh, for anyone wondering how I also did this little text animation here that kind of fades in like that. I think it's pretty cool. I do like how that looks like. Um, you can do this really, really easy. Check it out. Animated text. I'll leave this on the GitHub anyway. I'm just passing in the text here. And all I'm doing here is I'm splitting it. And then there's this new property in Tailwind V4 that I'm really excited about because you may be like, I'm still missing some stuff from frame or motion like the initial style and then animate to that style. That was a huge one for me. Like I could not live without that. But now you got starting style. How cool is that? You can just say starting, start at opacity 25 and then go back to opacity 100. And then I'm just doing a transition delay here with the index. I'm kind of halving that by 100 just so it's not too crazy. And look at that. That's all it takes. I can make it slower if I want, if I just divided by 50 so you can control it and pass it maybe like as a parameter. But look at that. There's so much that we can do now with just CSS that I'm, I'm, I'm you know, it just makes web development fun for me again. Um, all these different hacks that we needed to do to get these things working, even with scroll animations, you know, um, I'm, I'm happy we're moving away from that. So. Anyway, that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed this little episode. Let me know what you think down below. Are you using view transitions? What frameworks are you using it in? Uh, curious to hear your thoughts. Okay, video over.